Ashe, Ago, Morubara Orisha, Morubara Orisha, Ago, Morubara Orisha. Ibara go moruba Ibara go ago moruba Homo de conico Ibara go ago moruba Elek bae chulona so glad when the sun goes down I'd be so glad when the sun goes down I ain't all that sleep babe but I want to lie down I ain't all that sleep babe but I want to lie down yeah I want to lie down baby I want to lie down How you? You ain't the devil, is you? The devil done fooled me more than once, and I ain't gonna be fooled again. I ain't no Bible reader, but I reckon you said a few Hail Marys in your time. I see you one of the musicians. The name's Edward Ash. <laughs> Most folks call me Ed. Maybe you can stay, play a few songs for my pop. Hey, pop. I come bearing gifts to send you off. I'll bless you with those cheap cigars you be smoking, them old Henry's and the sunflower. The kind you always put in Ma's hair. I put you in the ground good and deep. Can the church say amen? I know we might be weary this evening, but if you bear with me, I promise this night will be fruitful. So I say again, can the church say amen? Well, all right now. Thank you all for coming. Seem like all the town folk here. My pop, Jake Ironleg Ash, is surely looking down and us smiling. We all know how he died. Willie Green hung him from this tree last night. He couldn't catch the breeze that was swinging him. Folks like the Green family been robbing us for a long time. Whether it be robbing profit from our pockets or robbing the ballot box when we try to end all this nonsense or robbing us of life. Well, we ain't no crop to be picked off. Now, we must have a call to action and the action is this. Burn. Cleanse this town with fire before they cleanse it with our blood. 20 years ago to this day, Willie Green's father, Leroy Green, killed my Uncle Richard, my pop's brother, hung him from this same tree. It just keep happening, don't it?
My pop called us back together then too. We met where we all standing now, at the bottom of the levees, cause a flood was coming. My pop carved us some canoes, and when them levees broke, the wave carried us to Chicago. Now there ain't no flood coming. The only ship we got this time around to carry us is kinship. I remember it clear as crystal. The great flood of 1927, 20 years back. I was just a youngin, barely knee high to a grasshopper. Back then, there was nothing that chilled me to my bones more than old Leroy Green and his horsewhip. My pop had a dream, though, said he saw the waters rising and said them waters was going to carry us to freedom. Lo and behold, he was right. We started right here. We've been chopping wood since daybreak. I was sitting right there, and he was like... I've almost cut down all the gods. Them trees gods? Just like we is. Why are you killing our kin then? Gods can't die, just change. And I'm changing these gods to canoes before that flood comes. Pop, there ain't no flood coming. It's too hot for all this nonsense. If you help me carve quick, we'll be done quick. Quick? How are we gonna carve quick? There's too much wood there. Look like the whole woodland stacked up. Talking about quick. Boy, mind who you talking to and pick up that there hammer. Ah. Pick up them bucket of nails, too. Ah. Set them close to the side for now. Before you lay into this tree, you gotta mark it first, like so. That'll make sure you ain't going all over the place when you get fired up. Now, take this ax in your hand and hit the mark. Pop this boring. Why I gotta be stuck doing this? Most boys playing by the creek. Most boys ain't got sense. Ha! This town gonna be gone by the end of the week. Ha! So what? Folks bound for Chicago when we stuck out here building a wannabe ark like we know. Noah. Noah survived his flood. Ha! And we gonna do the same. Ha! The water's gonna carry us to Chicago. Ha! So if we know it, let me get two of everything. Two milk duds, two red hot dollars, two bay roots, two Mr. Good Bars. Your teeth gonna rot faster than Br'er Rabbit, ha! If you eat up all them sweets, ha! You said this town gonna be gone, so I won't have no one to hide my smile from, no way. You ain't gonna be smiling in a minute, ha! You know fun, sometime life calls for fun, ha! Sometime it calls for work, ha! Now it's time for work, ha! Fine, but you gotta promise me we ain't gonna eat up all our time out here. If you hurry up, we can eat up more than time. Ha! Your ma got them greens on the stove. Greens? Now you got some fire under you looking like you got the spirit of John Henry. Go on and take up this here axe. Whoop! <laughs> Boy, you looking like you won't hit a lick out of snake. That's all right. You just got to get your sea legs under you. Drag one of them fallen gods over and cut off one of their limbs. I know it's heavy. All right, now. Just take this ax in your hand and try a blow. Whoa, cut off their limbs, not mine. Make sure there's distance. Bless your pea picking little heart. It all comes in time. I can't wait till I'm strong enough to carry my own axe. I'm about to be the best builder this side of the Mason Dixie line. I'm gonna be like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And all them tree gods gonna fall. They ain't gonna scream or nothing, just fall quiet like sugar cane do. And when all is silent and the woods are still, I'm gonna build my tree house from the fallen gods. 
the moon gonna be my nightlight. I'm gonna make my house as big as the big house Mr. Leroy Green has. A mansion type house, but I won't have my house be built from pain unlike Mr. Leroy Green. We pick, he come, we pick, he come, we pick, he come. Jake, where's my cotton? Right here, Mr. Leroy Green. This don't amount to a hill of beans. My family picking as fast as we can. Pick, pick, pick as fast as you can, cause if you don't, we'll hang your... <gasps> ha! That's enough, Ed. But why Mr. Leroy Green gonna have to go and kill Uncle Richard? Cause Mr. Leroy Green wicked. And we ain't. We try not to be. If we do wicked deeds, we can always be washed of our sins. Cause we have something called conscience. But the truly wicked ain't got that part in them. They just reek to high heaven. It was a tree God akin to this bark that hung Uncle Richard. God giveth and he taketh away, and this tree God had its limbs stretched out, offering itself to take my brother. Ha! But your uncle was brave, as godlike as they come. He was rooted in himself. He did not flinch. A whole crowd was gathered to see his smiling white faces. Ha! He looked Mr. Leroy Green right in his eyes. Ha! He wasn't fearing nothing. Ha! He was flooded with his spirit. You hanging me cause I sold that cotton? You ain't God, Mr. Leroy, your blood runs red just like me and my kin. Ha! And he flew like High John the Conqueror off that ladder. Ha! 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 Wow, Pop, you smashed that tree to bits! You ain't seen nothing yet. Ha! Ha! Who's that riding? John the Revelator, tell me. Who's that riding? John the Revelator, well, who's that riding? John the Revelator wrote the book of the seven seals. It's hard to find the words that'll do justice to a good man, but, um, Pop loved our family meals, just sitting down with Ma and I after a long day of working the land. He also loved his rum. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> this is better than that corn whiskey they be serving. And one for you. Pop and Gordon Lee used to sit on our porch drinking and throwing down the dice. I'll be out back around the corner trying to learn the tricks of the trade. All right, my turn. You in trouble now, Jake. Let's see if lightning strikes. Mama need a new pair of shoes. Seven again, I earn me 50 cents. Maybe I can take out Fine ass Inez. I saw her down at the juke joint looking sweeter than a Georgia peach. Now I know you tangled eyed Inez always look good. But the way the bungalow lot hit her yellow dress tonight had me singing everything but God's grace. That's cause that yellow dress had you thinking about sinning. You goddamn right, that dress was so tight I could see her religion. Looked like she got some Indian in her, some of that Chickasaw blood. She one of them red bones. Ain't nothing wrong with being one of them red bones. Ain't nothing wrong with being a common midnight skin child of God either. But Inez is fine. That peach she be walking with so sweet I know it comes straight from the motherland. If the motherland looked like that, sign me up. Lord knows I didn't see none of that when I was overseas, finding with them French folk. I never just what hips are the main reason I wanted to come home. I had something to fight for here. I'll turn to a sailor just to drown in her sea. My eyes catch drums every time she walked by and them drums she got sing a battle cry. 
You remember that old girl down on Johnson Street, I believe the people called her Louise McGee. Yeah, remember Louise. She's still up there working her farm till her knuckles bleed. Been going on past 10 years now with no man neither. Why you got Louise on your mind? Four, nine. Just thinking about if something were to happen to me, would Ida be able to tend to things like Louise do? What you think gonna happen to you? I think my rage gonna get the best of me before this flood come. Leroy lynched my brother, then got the nerve to raise the rent on my land. Sharecropping, the only job I know where you lose money while you work. My kinfolk starving cause of it. When I go down to see him to collect my yearly earnings, he better pay me what's mine or else I'm not sure what I'm liable to do. All the color folk know Leroy got hell in his chest, something in his soul that just don't sit right. He think the sun come up just to hear him crow. Don't be a fool, Jake. You gotta hush up talking about that flood now. This the no joke South. These white folks around here don't play. Ten, how you like me now? I've been carving some canoes. I told you to hush up talking about that dream. I've been having this dream. What your dreams say? It's not. The moon is full. My kin is drifting afloat on the river. We stuck on our canoe, swaying back and forth. At first, the only sounds are June bugs and Ida sleeping, her breath waving in and out. Sometime a breeze comes and rocks us some more. Then Ida begins singing in her sleep, just a whimper. I can't make out what the words are, but she's just humming while the river rolling. Little Ed is behind me, dangling his feet in the water, looking up at starlight. I look over and see Leroy with an army of white folks walking close to the riverbank. I look over to the other side of the river and see all the color folk approaching the shoreline. I look up and see a huge wave, like the hand of God touched the water. I try to wake Ida, but she don't move. I call for little Ed, but he don't hear. The white folk and color folk start yelling and shouting. I try to shelter my kin in my arms before our canoe is overtaken by water or rage. I shout for God, but he don't come. I look to the horizon. I see a figure standing where the sea and sun meet. It's my grandma. She root working with some goldenrod. I yell, Grandma, help! She whispers, the river feverish, boiling like fire, and need to cool down. She sprinkled the golden rod in the water, and the wave melted back into the horizon. That's when I woke up. That sounds like some Old Testament shit. But there ain't no flood coming. That's just your mind running away from you. My dream means something. Three. The way you've been acting around town, you should be more worried about a flood of white folks than a flood of water. Seven. Mom and Pop were something else. Pop was worried about a flood, knowing he had a whole hurricane to deal with as soon as he got home. I would overhear her storms. You have to stop talking this nonsense. Folks whispering about how Jake gone crazy, about how he yelling about some flood. 
My grandma Ruth trying to tell me something. No, she ain't. I don't want to hear nothing more about this dream. This is just your grief talking, your grief saying you want to be carried away. And I get that, Jake, after what happened to your brother. Seeing him like that, I don't know what kind of pain that must bring. But you got to keep your wits about you. Gossip spreads like wildfire. And once the white folks hear there's a crazy nigga running around you as good as dead. I ain't crazy, and this just ain't grief talking. You spend hours out by the bayou, in the hot noonday, carving away, making them canoes. You drag them all over hell's half acre, carrying them on your backs, and then you just be giving them the folks. You know what that look like, Jake? It look like you ain't got no sense. You need to go down to talk to Deacon Charlie down at the church on Sunday so he can pray for you. I don't need to talk to no Deacon Charlie. Deacon Charlie need to talk to me. How are we gonna preach about Noah then be blind when Noah is standing right in front of him? You ain't Noah, Jake. Honey, I love you, but there's something ailing your mind, some sickness in your thoughts. Maybe Jesus can bring you some salvation. Jesus ain't got no answers for me. My brother got lynched. What questions can I ask Jesus to bring me peace? What you think Mr. Leroy gonna say about our money? He gonna say what he always say. How we slave a whole harvest and not get a cent? I'll figure something out. Bargain my necklace. I'll play dominoes with the devil before I bargain my mama's necklace. But you gave it to me, so now it's mine to give away. We ain't selling the, the necklace. I'll go down and see Cecil. His landowner pays him and bears a flower and lard. I'll see if Leroy can do the same. What we gonna do with bears of flour and lard? Sell it at the market. We won't get enough selling that. This necklace is just one of them things we have to give up. You remember when I first gave it to you? We were in a juke joint down in Chickasaw County in Egypt on Washington Road, deep in the backwoods. Cigar smoke filled the room. The lights were dimmed real low, but I could have seen you smile even if the Nile was between us. <laughs> I walked over, sat down and said, listen, baby. My mama gave me this necklace to offer it to the first queen of Egypt and you looking like you fit the bill. May I have this dance? You nodded yeah and I put this necklace around your neck and we made our way to the dance floor. <laughs> I swear the blue soaked through our skin like a hot knife in butter. I held you close, so close. I thought all the delta went still. I wanted another dance, but you said your mama would be madder than a wet hen if you weren't home on time. It was all ahead of us. But dreams drift, Jake. Ain't no way I can be a nurse in Chicago now. We can't move. None of the sharecroppers can. Our debt keeps rising. It sinks us deeper in a soil we don't own. Sell my necklace in the morning. That'll last us a couple of weeks. I hid the necklace at the crack of dawn so you couldn't sell it and buried it deep till it slipped away from y'all's memory. Later on that day, Pop and I went down to collect our yearly earnings. Sons look up to their fathers like gods. It's a strange sight to see a god show mercy to a devil.
Do you think we can get some old Tootsie Rolls from Miss Cunningham's candy shop? If Mr. Leroy Green pay me what's mine. Don't he have to? You would think so. Why wouldn't he? Because he'll pee down my back and tell me it's raining. Wow, Mr. Leroy Green's house touches heaven. That's because it's rooted in hell. Hey, Pop, look, the firefly. That's nice, Ed. Look who it is. Willie, stop running around this house before I beat you with my horse whip. I've been hearing you went crazier than a Betsy bug. Just talk, Mr. Leroy. I suppose you're here to collect your profit. Yep. Well, I got some good news. You broke even. That means I, I know what breaking even means. Good. So you don't owe us nothing, and we don't owe you nothing. A year's work and not a cent? Numbers don't lie, but men do. You calling me a liar, boy? No, sir. Hey, Pop, let's chase the firefly. Good thinking there. Go on. Mr. Leroy, we're both reasonable men, and I just want what's mine. Boy, I done told you. You rented the land, the seed, the tools, the meal, and the fertilizer for me. That's a lot of furnishings. You put yourself in a heap of debt. When you sold me that cotton you picked a few weeks ago, I tallied it up and put that together with your debt. It all amounted to being exactly even. Well, I got some good news of my own. I have one more bale of cotton that I forgot to show you. It's in my closet right now. So if we even, that means I have one more bell of profit from my kin. Now, I can either get that profit from you or I can go down to the market. You know what? I'm just remembering. You forgot to pay me a month of rent. But don't worry. That extra bell of cotton should cover it. You ain't slick, Jake. If brains were leather, you wouldn't have enough to saddle a June bug. But I know you ain't dumb enough to try to go on down to the market by your lonesome to sell that extra bail. Because if you do, you be owing me a month of rent. You might even meet the same fate your brother did, just so we clear. We clear. Could I at least have some flour and lard? I could sell that at the market instead of that extra bell of cotton. I already sold all the flour and lard I had myself. If you want to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, I reckon you quit peddling and get to work. You boys better get home quick. There's a storm coming. I caught the firefly. Wanna see? Sure thing, Ed. Let's see what you got there. Did you get our money? Not this time. Maybe next year. All that picking? That's not fair. Let's see if we can get you that Tootsie Roll from Miss Cunningham's candy shop. When Pop got carried away with the task, nothing else drifted into his mind. I remember walking out to the bayou to go fishing and seeing Pop working harder than the hinges on the gates of Hades. Ha! 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 Let's see how many canoes we got so far. One, two, three. Can go to Betty Sue. She got eight kids. She can pack her things in just one canoe. Four can go to Gordon Lee. He think I'm crazy for chopping down a tree. 
but a flood coming and we gotta build our ships. Five can go to Inez and her wide hips. Mr. Leroy Green hates rising, but we'll flow away on time. Six for the hustler, Mr. Clark, knowing he lying for his shine. Seven for Rose and them. My dream be saying a wave rose, but when we get to the north, we'll start anew. Eight for Miss Pereira Toussaint and her island voodoo. Nine for the queen of the candy, Miss Cunningham. Yeah, I sold that cotton in the market, but these white folks stay cunning, damn. We was drowning with nothing at all. It's hard to keep standing, walking tall. And Mississippi, the no joke South. Now I'm the talk of the town, my name's in everybody's mouth. Shit is about to get real and it ain't no hoax. But I just gotta have faith in my folks. So 10 for Winston in his spices. 11 for Louise and her three daughters. They be the nicest neighbors one could ask for. 12 for my kin, can't wait to run on Chicago shore. 13 for little cousin Henry, warning folks feeling like a preacher. Y'all don't hear me? It's all good though, just gotta stay afloat. Roll the dice, take a chance, and never give up hope. Wow, Pop, you cut down all the tree gods. Guess it's time for us to catch our lunch. Hey, Pop, look, the firefly. The same one from before? Yep. How you know? This one got a special kind of glow. It do? It burns brighter than most. Sure look like it do. Do fireflies really got fire in them? We all got some fire in us. I like chasing their fire. You got enough spark of your own, don't you worry. One of the white boys in town said you went down to the market this morning to rip off Mr. Leroy Green. Colored sharecroppers round here need to sell their cotton to their landowners. Why? So hopefully we can get out of debt. Why? Cause that's the way it is. Why? Cause white folks fucked up. Ooh, you said a bad word. Don't tell your mother. So you didn't sell our cotton back to Mr. Leroy Green? I did not. You broke the rules? I broke the law, a special law for colored folk. Is something bad gonna happen? I reckon it will. What's gonna happen? Mr. Leroy gonna get a rope. Are you gonna get strung up like Uncle Richard? The water's gonna carry us to Chicago before that happened. Promise? Promise. When I close my eyes, I still be seeing him, a ghost slowly swinging in the breeze. Folks in town make fun of me. They say I be looking crazy staring up at an empty sky. When something bad happens, like seeing your king get hurt, it sticks with you. You carry the hurt with you wherever you go. The pain won't ever be washed away. But sometimes, when you're in your deepest hurt, the kin that passed on can come back to aid you. Your great-grandmother came to me in a dream and put me to work. Ever since, I've been carving canoes. Folks might call us crazy, but we ain't. We just hurt is all. The next time you see the ghost of your kin, Try to figure out what they're trying to tell you. They might be able to help you find your way. Pop and Gordon didn't always see eye to eye. 
They'd always have a hissy fit over the appropriate action to take when dealing with King Cotton. Nigga, you must be out your goddamn mind. Always good to see you, Gordon. Wish I could say the same, but I get no pleasure in seeing a dead man walk. I ain't dead, Jet. Might as well be. What the hell were you thinking? Not only did you make your own noose, you put a noose around all our necks. How you figure? They rallying a mob, Jake. All the town talking about how you sold a sea of cotton down at the market, but how you stole from Mr. Leroy Green. My kin was the one who picked that cotton. You need to realize the white man owns everything you got. It's a stupid system. I know that and you know that, but he owns your breath before you breathe. You remember what happened in Texas, Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, Florida, Virginia, and Nebraska a few years ago? It was 1919. White folks went meaner than a wet panther. Folks called it the Red Summer because there was so much blood. It was that mob way of thinking of rounding folks up, that mob way of lynching. These white folks don't care who they hit and we have a mob heading our way. If they come, let them come. Mr. Leroy Green lynched my brother. I have my grandfather's ax right here. He ain't taking no more kin from me. You better hope that flood come and wash you away far from here. And if it do, I got some canoes. I got yours over yonder. The only thing we need to worry about is Mr. Leroy's mob. You need to prepare yourself. I told the rest of the color folk to stay locked and loaded. We got guns if they want blood. We standing side by side if need be. But you still might need more than that ax to handle what's coming. We meet him down at the church in a few. I reckon you come along. You need all the blessings you can get. Pop was in the pulpit conjuring the spirit of Daniel and the lion's den. Lord knows I've been a stranger to his house. I ain't been to church since Hector was a pup. So thank you, Deacon Charlie, for letting me speak here tonight. Some of you might think I'm a fool, and you may be right. I know I put y'all in danger. To go on down to the market to sell that extra bale of cotton boggles the mind. But saints become sinners. In a time that moves them so, I found myself at the crossroads to follow the law or to provide for my kin. I ain't no prophet, I can hardly win a crap game, but even the blind can see them levees gonna break. And they're gonna break quicker than any white mob can break our spirits. And when that water and hay comes raining down, this town gonna be washed away. The Bible says Noah made many offerings on his altar for the Lord to endure his flood. Well, I offer each of you a canoe to set you on your way. I look out tonight on this beautiful congregation gathered here and I have faith we'll make it to Chicago. We just need to remember that old song and wade in the water because God's going to trouble the water. Wade in the water, wade in the water, children, wade in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. I remember <clears throat> later that night laying the last blow into a crooked god as I looked over the boneyard of speechless trees and saw Ma on the porch polishing her rifle talking to Grandma Alice in the sky. <laughs> Mm 
Hey, Ma, how are you? <laughs> God won't send us a breeze. The air is stuck just like we all are. Seem like God forgot we're here. God turned a blind eye. He can't see nothing. Or maybe it's this dust that be blinding him. When you walk around here, you kick up so much dust. Maybe our dust clouds got too thick so he can't look down on high to see his own children suffering. But I see mine. I see how much air it goes without. I can't remember the last time he had something hearty in his belly. And then Jake, he tries to hide so much from me. He tries to hide the fact that he sold all that cotton. Now, Leroy gonna do what he did to Richard. The only thing keeping my head above water now is hope. Blind hope. Last night, I swore you spoke to me. I usually talk to you most nights in prayer before I put my head on the pillow, but this time you actually came to me as a vision in the night. We were sitting right here on this porch, looking up at the stars, just like we did when I was on our family's farm. You would be sitting in a rocking chair, weaving a quilt by candlelight. Every stitch was perfectly placed. Not sure how you did it, but I wanted to weave just like you. One stitch was a star and you could blanket the sky. I would just sit there, look up, and think how big the sky was. You can feel so small looking up at a Mississippi sky. But you said, don't ever let anyone or anything ever make you feel small. When I was older, you gave me this rifle and said, and if the world ever tries to do you any harm to try to make you feel small, this here ought to help. This last gift of burial will set you off down the river so you can get to them gates. Memory is strange, cause time gets all crooked. If it's a memory full of hurt, time slows down. The slower the memory, the slower it seems like you can let it alone. Parts of this memory went slower than a herd of turtles. Mr. Leroy Green rallied up his mob. Water began to overflow the streets. Some of us fled, but some of us stayed. Those that stayed came here to the bottom of the levees where the oldest cotton field in Greenville stood so the waters could carry us to freedom. We piled everything we owned into our canoes. Pop was in the front, Ma was in the middle, and I was way in the back. And there we sat, waiting for the wave. Time slipped on by. I started seeing fireflies dancing in the sky. I couldn't find the one with the special kind of glow. I peeked out and saw all the devil's armies coming up the cotton field with their rifles, axes, and nooses. Mr. Green leading the crusade with his horse whip. His boy really by his side, excited to see his first hanging. We got out of our canoes. Y'all pulled out your rifles, a standoff like I ain't never seen. We had our backs against the levees facing Leroy's mob. Then I started to see my Uncle Richard's ghost slowly swinging in the breeze.
He's pointing across the cotton field at something. I'm trying to figure out what he's trying to tell me. I follow his gaze and see that he's pointing to the firefly with the special kind of glow. I run across the cotton field into the backwoods after it. To catch it. Just as I raised my head, I saw y'all were meeting Mr. Leroy Green's Hell's Fire. I run across the cotton field to the bottom of the levees and saw they were beginning to break. The wood was beginning to splinter. The water was building. The flood coming, the flood coming, the flood coming. A huge wave came over us. It looked like it touched the sky. I was stuck, I couldn't move as I saw all my kin being washed away. All the winds and rivers from the south came and carried everyone off. I was alone. I turned my head to see Mr. Leroy Green. He was my fear, and my fear was still standing, gripping his horse whip, smiling his wicked teeth across the cotton field. It was just me and him. My fear began walking my way, unsure of what to do. I looked to my hands and opened them to free the firefly with a special kind of glow. I looked to the soil and saw the tool we used to slay our gods. I looked over to see hell's fire in Mr. Leroy Green, my fear's eyes. My fear began running my way. So I ran too. I realized I was strong enough to carry my own ax. I was face to face with my fear. He slashed with his horse whip. I thought to dodge it. I swung with my ax, but missed. He threw a punch that hit me square in my jaw. I threw one back in his stomach. He kicked up dust that fled right in my eyes. I slashed with my ax and hit his arm. He dropped his whip. He gripped me with both hands by the throat. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't speak. I dropped my ax. It landed right by my feet. He pushed me to the ground. My fear was on top, choking the breath out of me. I prayed for strength to reach my ax. I almost managed to grab it, then I clutched it and flung it at his chest, knocking him back, leaking blood. I looked him right in his eyes. I raised my ax and with one swift blow, ha! I cut down Mr. Leroy Green, my fear that day and watched him flow downstream. But I was still lost among the waters. I was lost and didn't know which way to go. The wreckage was all around me, being astray from my kin. After days, weeks, months of trying to keep my head above water, my body gave in, heavy like iron as the waters kept rising. I could barely breathe, sinking, sinking, sinking deeper and deeper till the moon faded from the river. And just when I thought I was gone, I saw your hand part the waters like you was akin to Moses. I reached up and grabbed it, and you pulled me up to the open air. <sighs> Into our canoe, where we sailed to the shore, to the soft soil, where we met up with Ma, and were overflowing in tears of joy as the waters carried us to Shakar. Some bright morning when this life is over, I'll fly away.
to that home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Hey, yeah! My pop knew he wasn't long for this world. So he wanted to visit his home one last time. Maybe have one more drink down at the King's Tavern. Maybe listen to one more blues song down at the juke joint. Maybe look at a Mississippi moon one more time over the bayou. Greenville was always his home. He wasn't going to let Mr. Leroy Green take away the joy he had for his homeland. Yesterday, he went down to the old market because he wanted to remember the day he took charge. By chance, he ran into Willie Green. He hadn't seen him since he was a little boy on this here cotton field. He remembered that day. 20 years ago, when I killed my fear, his father. And Willie Green wanted payback. So he followed in his father's footsteps. He rallied a mob and hung my pop. Tonight, we must leave our mark, burn this town to the ground. We all have some fire in us. I'll go ahead and light the first flame, setting fire to the tree that hung my blood in hopes that it burns at the root. <laughs> 